Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Tonight, I've got a couple of interesting explorer and explorer-type guitars to share with you. Starting with Mike and Mike's Guitar Bar on Reverb, they just listed this 1989 Gibson Explorer in a sparkle silver burst finish. So seeing this price tag of 3100 bucks, I was really, really, really hoping that this was like a custom shop one-off order that just has a crazy sparkle silver burst finish. Because silver burst in the late 80s, you just did not find that on too many guitars. Now there's the showcase edition Les Paul standards, as well as some regular Les Paul standards, but as far as customs, those really started to phase out around 1986. Now I'm not saying that you won't find one, but it would probably be a custom order until they started to bring those back in the early 2000s. So looking through this one, it's like, oh yeah, that's kind of cool. I've been starting to dig sparkle finishes a little bit more. And heck, this one even has the Bill Lawrence, the original pickups. Gibson would use these from very late 87 until very early 1990. So that is correct for 1989. So that's cool that it still has the original pickups. And man, does that look sweet in that red case. That case is definitely a little bit older than the guitar in my opinion, but it doesn't really matter. But no, I got to the serial number and it's like, okay, yep, that's definitely a refinish. Gibson would not have a black serial number like that. So this probably started life as a solid finish. But hey, for a refinish, this looks great. It's got it on the front. It's got it on the back. Perfect burst on the neck and the headstock. So then I went down here to read who did it, and it's like, oh, Marty Bell. That is the guy you go to when you want super crazy metal flake finishes. He's semi-retired right now, but if you can get him to do something, his prices are actually pretty reasonable for the quality of work. Like, we featured him in an old episode, I forget which one it was, but he does a whole bunch of stuff, as you can see here. Even tiger stripes that are sparkly. And hey, here's a triple pickup Les Paul Custom. So looking at his prices here, if you can actually get him to work on your guitar, it's at least $700. And I would assume for something a little bit more special like this, having multiple bursts, there's probably an upcharge on that. So that's probably at least a $1,000 refinish job here. And although typically it's not smart to add that to the price, only Gibson can do that within the demo shop and get away with it. But occasionally when it turns out as well as this one, you know, sometimes people will pay it. That is not a bad price for what this is. It would be really difficult to buy one of these, send it in, and get it for any cheaper. Because that's about 3200 bucks all in. And the only one I can currently find available for sale from 1989 in this configuration, which is probably how it originally looked, they want two and a half thousand bucks. If you open it up to any 80s one in the regular configuration, here's what you could also expect to pay. So I guess what I'm saying is, if you fall in love with this and you want to buy it, use my reverb link in the description. <laughs> I can definitely recommend this one at that price, that's definitely fair. Especially since you still have the original pickups. But our next two are a little bit strange. From Japan in 2018, we have one of these guys. Okay, so this is called the Futura within Gibson's lineup. It is essentially the Explorer prototype. There are real Karina Futuras out there. Now, I'm not saying the one that we see right here is necessarily an original one. I remember when this was first listed, but you know, it gives you a good idea of what the Explorer was meant to look like before they refined it into the beautiful shape that we know yet today. And even though I love quirky guitars in Gibson history, this is one that just has never spoken to me in the slightest. And I'm a big Explorer fan. However, I've always said if I'm going to document one, I'd want to get one of these sparkle ones because they did a handful of these in various different finishes. This one is like a dark red metallic. That is looking great. You can tell under some stage lights, this thing would really come to life. If you're going to rock a weird guitar shape, you might as well have a standout finish too because we haven't even talked about our headstock yet. That's right. Traditionally, these things get the weird forked headstock design which some original explorers did get. You can find reissues of a forked headstock explorer. That's another one that's never super appealed to me, but now that I know there are original explorers like that, you know, I've warmed up to that fact. But this one's offered by Lakeshore Guitars here on Reverb, and I'll say their 5,000 price tag is not the worst price that could be put on one of these. But also in a shop for $500 additional, we've got Black Prism. Now this is starting to remind me of like the modern flying V and what I thought it was going to be. So instead of turning purple at certain angles, we just have all the dancing colors and lights in the finish. It looks like it got some green, some red, some orange, maybe even a little bit of blue right here. 
In fact, a lot of blue. I even see some yellow now. That is a really sweet finish. I don't blame them for asking $500 more. That is kind of tempting. But you know what would make this even crazier? Instead of a rosewood fretboard, Ebony would have looked sweet, but what I want to say here is how about a maple fretboard? <laughs> Just make it absolutely insane. But yeah, this is essentially what I wanted the modern Flying V to be, and that came about in 2018, so they obviously knew how to do this finish to say Ebony Prism, but no, they wanted to make those things purple, which is cool in their own right, but hey, I just wanted to share these guitars with you today. But why let the fun stop there? Check out this Explorer Chicago Music Exchange listed. I tried to buy it, but they didn't want to haggle too much, and honestly, I, I didn't blame them, so I just said, all right, we'll, we'll leave it for someone else. Figured mahogany within Gibson's lineup in modern day era is so hard to find. Like, we've documented the really cool backs of my early 2000s Les Paul standards in my personal collection, right? But we're talking more modern here. Look at this Explorer. Sadly, it's a three-piece body, so that kind of turned me off a bit, but the largest portion of the body on this one is just incredibly figured. I mean, you even get a little bit of dancing right here. This is one of those guitars where, in person, it would have looked phenomenal. I mean, we swap over to the back here, it looks like all the pieces have some sort of a figuring. So maybe this would have looked better at certain angles too. Now I'm kind of regretting not buying it. <laughs> that would be a fantastic review and demo piece. I knew it wasn't going to last long. The only thing that would have made this better is if the neck would have had some figuring within it too. But CME was very fair on the pricing of this one. And okay, now that we see it at an angle, I guess all the pieces did have some figuring. And it was in pretty clean shape too. Looks like a couple scratches, nicks or dings. Dunlop strap locks on it, but it does have an original case. In 1780, yeah, they could have at least got 2200 out of that. Let's see what other cool explorers we can find tonight. Would you believe there's only 82 explorers currently for sale? That's insane, but oh, I think I've been looking for one of these. Gibson Explorer Blackout. I've vaguely heard of that before. Special edition with dirty fingers pickups. How long has this been up? 24 days. I think I missed this. So this was a limited edition that, look at those inlays. You normally only found those in like the late 80s as far as like regular Gibson body shapes go, outside of like the Trini Lopez model. But modern day Dirty Fingers pickups in here, that's a really cool Explorer, especially being made in 2015. Oh yeah, I remember now. I found these surfing one night and I was like, whoa, we did do something cool in 2015. Because look, it even has black binding. Strangely enough, no fret nibs, but don't be scared. That's just how 2015s were. I would really enjoy documenting one of these because those inlays make this Explorer really cool. And this one appears to be in really good shape. But there doesn't appear to be any sales history on these, so that makes it kind of hard to buy confidently. But here we go, looks like they were $2,000 brand new. And there we go, I was trying to figure out if it was a special ebony one or it would have rich light, and those are rich light. But that's okay, we still have the cool inlays, right? So one here sold for about $23, and here was one at $2,200 in Canadian. And here's one for only $34. <laughs> So that tells me anything between 2 and 3k would probably be about fair. However, with this one being in such good condition, I would probably value it between, you know, probably 25 to 3,000. So he's right on the nose right there. But hey, look at this. I found another one that seems to have some figuring in that same piece right there. I really wish these were just two-piece bodies, though, instead of three. So maybe that CME one wasn't quite as rare as I had thought. Because outside of limited edition collectible guitars, those are the ones I like to collect as well, the Extraordinary Ordinary examples. I will say the CME example definitely had much nicer figuring than this one though. It would not have surprised me if that was an employee's guitar or something. But hey, while we're talking about weird explorers, do you guys know about this one, the Explorer Pro? So this is actually a shrunken down Explorer. So it's not going to be as big and wide. So if you've always felt Explorers feel big on you, this is a model you can look at because it also gets a flame maple top. So now we don't have to worry about the figuring of the body and it gets bound, which is something you don't find on too many Explorers. We got black plastics, natural back and side, kind of like a Les Paul standard at this point. But look at this, almost Les Paul custom like fretboard, ebony with mother of pearl blocks and a Mother of Pearl Gibson logo. Very nice. Kind of just one of those early 2000s models nobody really ever talks about too much because they're just kind of weird. Since they've got the maple top, they don't have any type of a pickguard on them, so they get back routed. I definitely want to document one of these one day. 
But if you want something similar to that in the fanciness, but you hate the multi-piece tops, check out one of the older Gibson CMTs from the E2 lineup. So normally an E2 looks like this. They have like a contoured body and they're made out of multiple woods. These took those to an extreme. CMT stands for curly maple top. And it's not really a top top in the sense of it's really thick. These are more so veneers in my opinion. They're, they're about an eighth of an inch thick if I remember correctly. So it's not paper thin, but it's not like full on Les Paul top is what I'm trying to say here. But they're generally one piece here and they look fantastic. Now you lose all the contouring of the rest of the body that made the E2 so interesting. Again, another model that I need to document. But you've got binding on these as well. This one has a really dark fretboard and you get the traditional dot inlays. And hey, check out that really cool 80s Gibson logo there. That's a pretty nice example. But if you're wanting to see some more Explorer content in review and demo format, here's what I got on my channel for limited edition ones, because there's not a lot of limited edition Explorers. Like there was the shortly lived Tribute B2 Explorers, they're essentially just all blacked out. It was an okay guitar, not my favorite. Obviously you've got the Collector's Edition Explorer that was just released with the Brazilian Rosewood fretboards that are selling for 70,000 plus nowadays. If you're newer to the channel, check out my mystery eBay Explorer. I remember that was a really freaky thing. That was one of those mystery guitars where I'm not quite sure if I ever actually solved that accurately, but I did sell it as a mystery. And then we got things like the Vampire Blood Moon Explorer being made out of swamp ash. Now that's a cool one. I wasn't a huge fan of the trem system on it, but that's just me. You might like those blood red inlays that are in the shape of blood droplets. And then don't forget about all the Gibson signature ones. So you got like the Bill Kelleher Golden Axe here, which is a sweet explorer with a matching headstock, believe it or not. Lizzie Hale is awesome at designing explorers. We've got her black one, and then there's also the white one that came before that. And I'm really hoping one day her baritone explorer will see the light of day. Because let's see, this was done in 2019, so here we are in 2022. I think it's time to bring a Lizzie Hale signature back. Oh, and don't forget this one. <laughs> the Holy Explorer. I get people sending me links to these all the time. I do have a very old review of one. And one day I do hope to document the Holy V. Those are actually surprisingly nice guitars. I remember enjoying that one. And then in this guitar hunting episode, we saw an Explorer that somebody wanted a little bit better upper fret access on. Similar to the Jason Hook model that you can learn about in this episode. If you're on a bit of a budget, Epiphone also makes Explorers. You could check out like the Ghost Horse that came out this past year. Or Epiphone has also made Futuras. I reviewed the Prophecy Futura prototype in this episode. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at these explorers with me today and learning about some of the other limited edition models that you now need to go watch the full reviews and demos on. <laughs> All right, troglodytes, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.